Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, and today we are going to be talking about Faraday's Law and Lenz's Law in physics, electricity, and magnetism. So first, let's give the equation for Faraday's Law. Faraday's Law says this. V induced, in other words, induced voltage, and I'll explain what induced voltage is in a minute, equals negative N times delta flux over delta time. So let me explain what each of these variables mean in detail. First of all, our induced voltage. An induced voltage simply means that the voltage is gonna seemingly come out of nowhere. In other words, it's not gonna come from a battery source. It's gonna come out of thin air and there's gonna be a voltage all of a sudden. Why is there a voltage? Because you have a change in flux over time, which we'll get there in one second. N is simply the number of loops. If they don't tell you the number of loops, it is going to be one by default. The negative sign right there is actually used in Lenz's law, which I will explain after I'm finished with Faraday's law. And most of the time we ignore that negative sign because we just want the magnitude of the voltage. In other words, if I get a negative voltage for my answer, I'm probably going to ignore it and just make it positive because they usually just want the magnitude anyway. And finally, change in flux over change in time. This is specifically the magnetic flux, and whenever I have delta notation, remember that it's really like flux final minus flux initial, and then same with time. It's like time final minus time initial. 99% of the time, time initial is gonna be zero, so that's not a big deal. And the only other thing I wanna explain is that this is magnetic flux right here. That symbol right there, it's magnetic flux which honestly I could probably do a whole video on magnetic flux, but I'm not going to right now. I'm just gonna give you the equation. It's B, the magnetic field, times A, the area, times cosine theta, which most of the time you can ignore because they don't give you an angle like 99% of the time. So basically magnetic flux is whenever you have some kind of object that has a hole in it and magnetic field is allowed to flow through that hole. Think of magnetic flux as like a butterfly net. You're catching butterflies, except the butterflies are magnetic field lines. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say I've got a hoop of wire like this, and a magnetic field is allowed to pass through it, let's say with a magnitude of 75 Tesla. And then over time, what's gonna happen is the same loop of wire, the magnetic field is gonna change direction. So now it's still 75 Tesla, but it points in the opposite direction. What I want to know is what is the induced voltage going to be inside this hoop here? So I'm solving for V induced right now. I'm also gonna give you the radius of this circle. We'll say the radius is five meters. And I'm also gonna say that this switches direction, the magnetic field switches direction in a time of one minute. And remember that these red lines are my B field. So that's what B is, it's the magnetic field. And it looks like I can just plug in my equation and solve. So V induced is going to be negative, I didn't say what N is, the number of loops, so I'm just gonna say one, times change in flux. Well, let's think about this. Flux final, which is the last case here, that's gonna be a magnetic field of 75 times the area, which is pi r squared. So pi times five squared. And the cosine theta, I didn't give you an angle, and it looks like all the field lines are passing through, right through the center of the circle. So I don't even have to worry about cosine theta. It's just gonna be one, I'm going to ignore it. And then if I think of flux initial, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Magnetic field is 75, area didn't change. So it's 75 times pi times five squared. And if you think about this, isn't this just gonna be zero? Yes, right now it's it's gonna be zero because it's 75 times this minus 75 times that. It's just gonna cancel. And of course that just doesn't sound right. Some red flags are going off in our head right now. And that's because this is wrong. Well, one of these two are wrong. The problem is that we did not consider the direction. What do I mean? Well, isn't this final magnetic field pointing to the left, which we normally consider negative? And if that's the case, that should not be positive 75. That should be negative 75 which will change the math. Let me show you how. So back to our numerator here. Remember that this needs to be the change in flux, flux final minus flux initial in the numerator. So it's gonna be flux final, negative 75 
times pi times 25, because 5 squared is 25, and then minus flux initial, which is 75 times pi times 25, and the denominator is my time, one minute. I do not want minutes, I want seconds, so that's divided by 60 seconds. And if I plug this in my calculator, then I will get my final correct answer. And I will get a final answer of V induced equals 196 volts. You'll notice I got a positive answer because the two negatives ended up canceling out here and here. And then furthermore, even if I did get a negative answer, I would just make it positive anyway because I just wanted the magnitude of my voltage. So that's it for Faraday's law. And now let's talk about Lenz's law. So we use Lenz's law to figure out the direction of the current used to figure out direction of current from Faraday's law. But wait a minute, I thought Faraday's law was voltage. Yeah, that's true. But remember that a voltage creates a current and that's because of Ohm's law, which says V equals I times R. So basically what I'm saying here is that in this scenario, a voltage was generated and because there's a voltage, it's actually going to create a current in the loop. Now, whether that current flows clockwise or counterclockwise in this example, or any example for that matter, that's why we use Lenz's law and the right hand rule to figure it out. So let's give an example of Lenz's law. So let's say I have this rectangular hoop of wire that is just outside of this magnetic field which points out of the page. It's like a landmine field of magnetic fields coming out of the page. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push my rectangle so that now it's actually inside of that region. Now we're in the thick of things. And because of that, we now have a magnetic flux, right? Because man magnetic flux is equal to B times A. Before there was no B in the center, like this was squeaky clean, nothing inside it. Now you've got some magnetic field in there and you just increased your flux or really changed your flux. What I mean by that, in the initial case here, the flux was zero and now the flux, whatever it is, it's definitely greater than zero. So since you have a changing flux, that is going to create an induced voltage and that is going to therefore create a current. And now if we want to find the direction of the current, we need to use Lenz's law. Okay, so let me scroll up back to Faraday's law equation. As I mentioned at the very beginning, this negative sign right here I said was Lenz's law. What the heck did that mean? Lenz's law basically says if you have a change in flux, then the induced voltage will create a field in the opposite direction to counteract the change in flux. Now I just said a lot of words really quickly. What the heck does that mean? Let me explain it in the easiest words possible. Let's say this hoop of wire is like a thermostat and someone messing with the thermostat. What basically happened was someone messed with the thermostat and now the temperature is higher than we want it to be. So what does this wire do? It's gonna turn down the temperature to get it back to equilibrium so we're happy again. So what happened was there was an increase in flux out of the page, so this wire is actually gonna create its own magnetic field going into the page to counteract that. In other words, it goes back down to zero. But the question is, where did that magnetic flux and magnetic field come from? The answer is a current in a wire. And why is that? Because back in our lesson on current in a wire, a current in a wire will always produce a magnetic field. Now, we just have to answer the question, which way will that current point, clockwise or counterclockwise? So let me draw this scenario just one last time. The blue, I'm color coding, the blue is the field that I just created. I created the field going into the page to counteract the field coming out of the page. You know what I mean? They now cancel each other out. The question is, how did we make that field? We have two answer choices. It's either clockwise like this, or it's gonna be counterclockwise like that. The question is, how do I determine what's right? The answer is right hand rule. So there's like four different right hand rules we use in this class. Uh, this right hand rule, this is the right hand rule for Faraday's law. 
I also like to call this method the Velichka method because I had a student last semester whose last name was Velichka and she taught me a great way to find the right hand rule that was way better than the way I was doing it before. So this method I call the Velichka method in honor of her. So that means you're not going to find that name in any textbook. You would just call it the right hand rule. So basically your thumb points in the direction of your created magnetic field, your created B field. That means for this example, your thumb is pointing into the page because that's the symbol for into the page. And then two, all you got to do is curl your fingers and congratulations, you just found the direction of the current, which is what we wanted. So here's what I'm going to say for that. Looking at this example, my thumb points into the page because that's the direction of the created magnetic field. Curl my fingers. Looks like my fingers are curling clockwise. Might be backwards because of the camera for you but it is going to be clockwise so the current points clockwise try it yourself make sure you get the same answer if not maybe i made a mistake i mean i definitely didn't make a mistake here but if you think i did put it in the comments below i'll look into it so that's it for this example let's just do one more so we get the hang of it so for this one let's say i have a hoop of wire with some magnetic field pointing into the page we'll say it's 50 tesla and what's going to happen is I'm actually going to shrink this rectangle such that now it's a smaller rectangle, but the magnetic field stays the same. It's still 50 Tesla going through. Obviously what changed here is the area. So the question is, what is the direction of the current after this change happens? And the answer choice is it's either going to be clockwise or counterclockwise. It's the only two answers it can ever be. I suppose it could also be zero current. But we're definitely going to have a current here. Why? Because what was our change in flux? Think about it. Flux is not just dependent on the magnetic field. It's also dependent on the area. And our area shrunk. And basically what that means is, originally I had a nice big whatever flux. We'll just say 50. It's not 50 because I don't know the area. But let's just say it's 50 for the sake of argument. Now, let's say I cut this area in half, just making up a number here just for the sake of example, and let's say the flux is now 25. I need to increase my flux to get it back up to 50, and the way I do that, this wire is going to create a B field going into the page. And why is that? Because the flux decreased going into the page, I need to increase it going into the page to get it back up to normal. So basically, if I just draw only the little rectangle, I'm saying the created B field points into the page, Using the right hand rule here, my thumb's going to point into the page because that's the direction of the created B field. I curl my fingers. It looks like I get the same direction as before. It's clockwise. So the direction of the current is clockwise. And of course, there's a million more examples we could look at for Lenz's Law and Faraday's Law. But at least this is going to get you a good start so you can start tackling some problems on your own. So I hope this made sense. If not, please post your questions in the comments below. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.